Here's the story of a person living beside the Myra Quarry, located just outside of Fredericton, on the railroad. In 2014, the quarry was given speedy approval to do business in a protected area for environment over the third largest aquifer in Canada and to disturb the quality of life for many people living along the railroad. The whole process violated all kinds of rules and there's been no transparency and no accountability as to how that happened in the first place. Over the past six years, that quarry has been protected and no one can figure out why. But the people who live there have not been protected by the Department of Health, Department of Environment, Department of Natural Resources, or any other political means to try to get some sense of justice, some sense of accountability, some change. So here's their story, first person, like a victim impact statement. It would be really nice if you could feel what they feel and imagine what it's like to live there and to know that this could happen in your backyard just as easily. The dust, for example, um, late April, early May, there was this um, whining, high-pitched sound coming from the quarry, and it lasted for about two weeks. So I was, was, I was unable to open my windows because it, it was just constant, constant, all day long. Um, I later found out it was because they were putting in some pipes or something because they were blasting mm -hmm. and they blasted. Mm -hmm. um, but I couldn't open up my windows and enjoy the spring. I couldn't go outside. Uh, even when my dog would go out to pee, he would, there was a few times where he would whine because the pitch was so high. Um, the dust is terrible. Um, I live on the west side of the road. Uh, where Jerry uh, lives, yes. and from the Rock Quarry uh, Road all the way down to probably the top of the hill going towards town yeah. is completely white. Yeah. And then the, the other side of the road is pavement, and that's from all the dust um, fallen. And, and does that depend on which way the wind's blowing, or that doesn't matter? No, it doesn't matter. It's just there constantly. And I couldn't, I couldn't open my window. Um, I couldn't let the spring air in. And it was really depressing at that time because it was also COVID. People are in lockdown. Um, you know, you want to spring clean. You want to go outside, enjoy the sun. Um, you can't do that because you've got the quarry in your backyard um, where it's just a constant banging and thrashing and beeping and uh, the noise is constant from six o'clock in the morning till seven o'clock at night and then you want to go out in your front yard and you can't because you know I'm quite close to the road so the trucks are just whizzing by every 30 40 50 seconds you know the yeah. noise the noise is terrible I have a huge maple tree in my front yard it's dead it's dying and I know it's because of the dust you know the dust can be seen even without um, Without them, yeah, without them blasting, the people downtown and uptown can see the dust up in that quarry. Mm -hmm. um, and it just settles on everything. Um, I was born and raised there, and I have been swimming in that brook for, well, now only 53 years because the last four years I've not gone near it because the last few times I was down there, um, there was just this white foam all across the water and black speckles on this foam. So I quit t taking my dogs there and, and swimming there myself, and I did that every day since I was born. What do you say to people that say that's just the price of progress? I don't mind progress, but not, you know, people say, well, it's in your backyard. Yes, it is in our backyard, literally. Um, there's thousands and thousands of acres in New Brunswick that this quarry could have been put and they chose us without telling us. No information about it. Um, <clears throat> I've found multiple, multiple, multiple rocks that I've picked up off the road. And um, we had that PROC um, meeting at the um, hotel a couple years ago. And I bought a, a 
box of rocks. <clears throat> and I went up to the front and I set a rock and every rock was at least the size of a tennis ball or bigger. And I set one in front of every person on that chair. And um, one rock was 6.5 pounds found it in front of the entrance to the railroad school where a couple days before, this was a couple of years ago, where a couple of days before the children, two, three, four, or five years old coming from the railroad daycare, walking up the sidewalk to go to the railroad school to play in the playground. That rock, I found out, falling off a truck, going say 80 kilometers an hour, has a velocity of 536 pounds on impact. You know what, what? Yeah, that close, eh? That so close. we're just waiting for someone to die, basically. Yeah. It's just a matter of when. When is somebody going to die? It's really terrible. It, it's depressing. It's really depressing. Everybody on the flats have been there for over 35 years, mm -hmm. 15, 60 years. Um, my aunt left there because she just couldn't do it. She was directly across from the um, the road going into the quarry. Um, you can't plant any flowers or do any gardening or everything dies or you know you you just it's just a constant 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 and nobody has any idea because I'm at home every, all day long too yeah. and it's never ending. Didn't they do some blasting recently? Yes. Do they give a notice that blasting is coming? Yes, they did, two days before. And two days before. Mm -hmm. And what's it like for you guys when, when they explode half the... Um, side? Well, the animals in the whole neighborhood are barking and, and running and hiding for cover. Um, they don't tell you, they say it's going to be between 10 and 5 p.m. So you really don't know when it's going to happen. So when it does happen, like you jump, um, your whole house shakes, your animals are freaking out, uh, you, you know. Foundations, walls, any of that crack? I've taken pictures, yes. Um, I live in a mini home. Uh, I've taken pictures um, a few years ago of any marks in my mini home and I do have two new cracks uh, in my walls. Yeah, um, and you you can't you can't enjoy anything. You can't go for a walk like other people have said. You can't go for a bike ride. You can't. I'm scared to pull out of my driveway because where I'm situated, uh, just above me is a turn, so I can look five times and there's no, no, no traffic coming and pull out of my driveway and then a second later, boom, there's a truck on my ass because he's coming around that turn and I didn't see him. Yep. Where I'm situated, I'm closer to the city end of, where I'm situated, they're going 80, 90 clicks at least because they're trying to make, to get up that hill. Yeah. Speed to get up the hill. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's really dangerous. It's very dangerous. We're living in an industrial nightmare. We're living in a hell hole. Uh, we didn't ask for this. When I was a little girl, you come down that hill and the elm trees would do an arch all the way down the flats. It was like driving into heaven. And then they had to cut all the elm trees down. Mm -hmm. But we still had the beautiful fields, the hills, the brook, the river, you know, to do anything. Horseback riding, four-wheeling, hiking. Yep. Fiddleheads, yep. you name it. You can't do anything anymore. How's your heart and soul? It's sad. It really, it's really sad because that literally is my home. I was born there. I bought a house there. Hmm. And it just seems like it's all been taken away. Hmm. Everything's been taken away. You can't enjoy your yard. You can't have friends over because they just get tired of listening to the noise. Um, you can't have a barbecue. You can't 
plant flowers. You can't put a little pool out there anymore to cool off because it just gets full of shit and dust and and you can't sit out there anyway because it's just bang, 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 beep, 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 crash, crash, crash all day long. Is there anyone you can get angry at for this? Does it feel like there's someone you can make accountable for this? Oh, good. Thanks for answering that question. Jennifer Bishop to start with. She, she's the one that signed off on the approval to operate uh, in the beginning. Um, Department of Environment. They know what's happening. They know, they know what we're, what's going on. Nobody cares. Hmm. Nobody cares. Hmm. Nobody. I wish people would just listen to us. Like, what are we? Who are we? Why is the government doing this? I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. There's so many things that they could be doing. If not, actually shutting the quarry down, they could be, you know, helping with some of these things, these problems with the rocks and the dust and the trucks being overloaded and the, and the speed limit. I followed a truck, well, I followed multiple trucks one time, many times, and um, this one truck was going 80 kilometers past the railroad school, and I followed him to my house. So he comes down around the hill and down, down around the corner and down the hill and he's going 90, 100 clicks. So I called the RCMP and he says, can you identify him? I said, no, how can I identify him? I was behind him. I've had, I have his license plate. Well, if you can't identify him in court, then there's nothing we can do. So, another time, I followed a truck doing the same thing. I followed them all the way up to the top of the quarry so I could identify them. And I said, you were speeding. Like, I was at the top of the quarry, like my car was a mess. <laughs> and, uh, no, I wasn't. I said, yes, I followed you all the way here to tell you that you were speeding. But I never did call the cop, police. It's like, why bother? Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to do anything. And um, the quarry says that they have no jurisdiction uh, t on the trucks once they leave their yard, but it's like other people have said, they are totally responsible because it's their gravel, mm. it's their dust, it's their contract. So nobody cares.